Hello everybody, how are you doing? In this video, I'll tell you if you can update your Express Entry profile before and after ITA. So many people have queries regarding this. Mostly, people are confused if they can update their Express Entry profile after getting the ITA or not, which information they can update and which information they can't. Should they actually accept the ITA or should they decline the ITA? So I'll clear that in this video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, I am Shitanshu from Dream Abroad and I regularly upload Canadian immigration and lifestyle videos. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my videos. Okay, so firstly, let us talk about updating the profile before getting the ITA. So one of the very common cases is, let's say you appeared for IELTS once, you didn't get the uh, CLB9 band, but you are able to create the Express Entry Profile. So of course, you, once you get the CLB9 or better band, then in that case, you should go back and update your Express Entry Profile. So should you be able to do it? Yes, you can definitely go on to update your profile with whatever information uh, you think is uh, correct. Apart from that, uh, you know, there can be many examples as such, like uh, let's say you updated your date of birth incorrectly. Maybe you updated uh, the date of birth of your spouse or your children incorrectly. Maybe you updated the, uh, the time span of your education or maybe the month or the year of your uh, work incorrectly. Maybe you updated your education incorrectly or you actually got an additional degree or diploma and you want to add the points for that. So whatever the case may be, you can actually go on to update your Express Entry profile. So this is the good news for you. Okay, now, so how you can actually go on to update it. So here's this simple screenshot. You'll find this update form button over there. Once you click this form, it will take you back to your Express Entry profile and then you can update whichever information you want to update. Now here I want to point out a very specific case up about updating your NOC code. So maybe uh, you find out that uh, your NOC code is not quite close to your job roles and responsibilities which you selected earlier so you want to change it now. Okay fine, go ahead, change it, no problem. But maybe sometimes what people do is they change their NOC codes based on the in-demand skill set of different provinces so that they can get an easy invitation uh, from different provinces. So if you're actually changing it frequently, mind it, all these changes gets recorded in a log file which your immigration officer can see anytime. So if there's any objectionable change like your NOC code getting changed uh, frequently, or let's say you earlier gave an NOC code for uh, IT tester, but then you gave the NOC code of a uh, financial accountant, that is totally different. So your profile might get scrutinized because of that. So please be cautious before updating your profile. Okay, having said that, uh, many people have questioned if they actually update their profile, will it actually affect the tie break rule? So I've got a good news for you. If you update your profile, the system will keep the original date and timestamp when you first submitted your profile. So even if you update your profile, uh, you know, a couple of times, no problem. Your system will only keep the date when you first submitted your profile. Okay, now let's talk about updating profile after getting your ITA. It gets a bit complex after getting the ITA. It's not as simple as uh, before the ITA. Now, once you've got the ITA, your profile gets logged. So how can you actually go on to update any information that you uh, want to update over there? So of course, when we get the ITA, we get very happy. But uh, once you go on to fill the APR or the application for PR, you found out that there's some information which is incorrect. Now you will get worried what you should do actually. Should you actually go on to decline that ITA or should you actually accept that ITA and uh, you know provide information in the APR that is the application or the forms which you actually fill in 
after the ITA. So what should you do in such a case? So it has been very explicitly explained in the official website of Government of Canada. So I'll take you there and I'll read out that excerpt where it is very clearly mentioned in which cases you should actually decline the ITA, in which cases you should actually update the uh, information in the APR. So let's go on to the uh, official website of Government of Canada. Okay, so this was the page that I was talking about. This is the page about the ITA. So all the details about the ITA are mentioned here. So if you scroll down, you'll find this uh, section over here where it's written that when a candidate situation changes after the ITA is issued. I'll provide the link to uh, this web page in the description box. You can check it out. But I'll take a couple of minutes to read it out and explain the details to you guys. So it's written clearly over here that the, clear, uh, that the candidate's express entry profile is automatically locked when they're issued an ITA. So you can go on to change your details in the profile before getting the ITA, but not after that because it is locked. Now, candidates can only revise their profile information if they formally decline the ITA through their online account. So if you want to change your details in the profile, then you need to decline the ITA. However, the information may be updated in their APR. What is an APR? It is an application for PR. As I told you, the forms which you filled after getting the ITA, a lot of forms, a lot of details which need to go in. So when a candidate declines an ITA, they're automatically returned to the pool and uh, will be able to update their uh, profile information as they wait for a new ITA. So let's say your score is uh, 465 and you're very confident that uh, you'll get the ITA in the next draw as well. So what you can do is definitely you can decline the ITA, go on to update your express entry profile with whatever information you need to update. And then after that, hopefully in the next uh, draw, you'll get the ITA again. Okay, but what about those people who are, let's say, at uh, 450s? You'd be quite skeptical about the fact that will you actually get the ITA very soon or not? So what you should do in such a case? It says, if a candidate realizes after having been issued an ITA that the circumstance has changed or that the information in their profile on the basis of which they were issued an ITA is no longer accurate, the candidate is instructed to uh, recalculate their CRS score based on the, I mean, using the express entry calculator. So the examples of uh, changes in circumstances are uh, listed down below. So let's go on to uh, read the examples. So changes that could increase a candidate's CRS score would be a graduation from a higher level of schooling. So education uh, points gets increased, reaching an additional year of uh, Canadian work experience, obtaining a qualification, a certificate of qualification or improved language test scores. So all these are the examples when your uh, when your CRS score gets improved. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, changes which could actually decrease your um, CRS score. So the new language test score is uh, the lower level. When your original score expires and you retake the test, but the, but the latest test is actually uh, for lower score loss of uh, qualifying offer of uh, arranged employment. So this can be another example. So another example which is not mentioned over here would be uh, that uh, your uh, work experience which you mentioned as uh, three years is not actually three years, it's around uh, two years, eight months, nine months, but you gave it incorrectly. So your points will get reduced. Okay, let's talk about another point here uh, which could actually increase or decrease your uh, CRS score. Example would be additional of a spouse or common law partner since an applicant CRS score may increase or decrease depending on the spouse's uh, points as well. So these can be some of the points uh, where your CRS score would actually be increased or decreased. So your circumstance is actually getting changed in these kind of uh, cases. Another point which is a very debatable topic is uh, the birthday. If the birthday occurs after the ITA was issued, so what happens in that case? So change for which candidates are not penalized for losing points. So you won't be uh, penalized for it. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, now coming over again here, it says very clearly where, where there's a change in circumstance and the candidate goes forward with 
submitting an APR, the candidate must ensure that the change in circumstances properly reflected in their APR. So you must clearly mention the changes uh, which, which are there, which is different from uh, the express entry profile. If there's an update over there, if the ex information provided in the express entry profile is uh, different from the APR, you should actually mention it very clearly in the letter of explanation. That's the way to do it. Okay, let's say there's not a change of circumstance. Let's say you uh, misspelled the name of your spouse incorrectly or uh, you misspelled uh, your email incorrectly. So in such cases, you can actually go on to update the APR and mention that in your uh, letter of explanation. So that would be enough. But if in case your circumstances are getting changed uh, just like which are mentioned over here, which could affect your CRS score, then you should decline the ITA. And then after that, you should uh, update your explicitly profile. And hopefully, if your CRS points are not getting reduced that much, then you would get the ITA very soon. Okay, guys, so I hope that uh, all of this information uh, would be pretty clear to you. I'll provide the link in the description box below. So you can also read it out and check it out. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you like the video, please click the thumbs up button and uh, share it with your friends if you think it would be useful for them. And also, if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please click the subscribe button before moving on to the next video. Thanks again.